Okay, hello, welcome back to our series of top fives. Um, today we're going to talk about the top five reasons why you should work for a big brand or a big company in recruitment, at least once in your recruitment career. Uh, I think number one is obvious, and I think um, it's training, basically. And this isn't to say that you can't get really, really, really good training in smaller companies. It's just that if you think about all the big brands uh, in recruitment right now, they do have very good standardized, detail-focused, uh, detail training, I think, which especially if you're at the start of your career, it, it, it can only be a good thing, right, to experience uh, that level of kind of corporate training. And I think certainly for me, um, I didn't have that, and I was fine. As you, you know, as you can see, we yep. ended, ended up all right. Ended up all right yeah. But, you know, having worked for a big company, I've seen the benefit of people who, without experience, have come through that system and, um, you know, and, and really giving them a good foundation, I think, in their career. Yeah, I think the training could also be, uh, I think I had a similar career as Matt, right? I started in a boutique and then moved to a big brand later in my career. And I was already at that uh, senior con uh, manager uh, type of level. I really enjoyed the, even the, the management training I received yeah, yeah. In, in big brands, yeah. you know? So it doesn't matter, I think, if you start your career in a boutique or a big firm, at some point, I think you really wanna, if you're really serious about working in recruitment, there is something to learn from, from these big brands, right? Yeah. Uh, number two is the resources. You know, uh, again, working for a big brand, you have a machine behind you. You know, you have a household name that is, you know, if you're speaking with a client, they will straight away recognize that name. You know what you're doing. They know that behind you, you have, again, a machine that will help you uh, achieve a good outcome, which is finding good candidates for your client ultimately. So yeah. everything from, you know, from the marketing perspective, from accounting and finance, legal, all these kind of things that sometimes are a bit taken for granted, I think, uh, by uh, recruiters. You know, when you work for a big brand, a lot of those things are done for you. So you can actually focus and concentrate on what you do best, which is selling and really help your client finding the best candidates on the market. Yeah. I think the third point is the, uh, is the social side. You know, if you work for a big brand, you know, in simple terms, there's going to be more people in the in the office. Um, there tends to be a, a bigger budget for social events, and I think a bit more of a kind of a social calendar. So I think if you are the kind of person that likes to socialize with your colleagues, you know, wants to find friends at work, now that's it is a benefit of working for a bigger company. Absolutely. You know, I think the social side can be really good, and some of the events can be excellent. And again, if you are you know, starting your career in recruitment, the average age in those businesses tends to be a little bit younger, so you may work with people who are at a similar age, a similar career stage, so you can certainly have fun, I think, in a bigger business. Yeah, I think so, especially now with, uh, you know, the uh, hybrid work model. A lot of the times, I think, you know, people uh, don't really think about the impact that actually working with people you like and yep. making friends at work is really important, you know. For instance, if you, if you are a new grad, and you're starting your career in a new city or even in a new country, you go there by yourself, your first group of friends are gonna be the colleagues that you're gonna meet, all right? And, Definitely, yeah. You know, and, and that really helps you to navigate, I think, the up and down of recruitment. You know, it's much easier to navigate those up and downs if you are surrounded by a positive energy rather than be at home and sitting by yourself, you know, <laughs> like on a rainy day. Uh, so, you know, the social aspect, I think, is, is really uh, undervalued, I think, sometimes, right? And, and so. uh, big brands, they can certainly give you that, I think. Uh, point number four is job security. Uh, so, of course, uh, if you're working for a big brands, big brands are designed, and of course, they have that scale that helps them navigate a little bit the ups and downs of, of the recruitment industry, you know. Uh, the recruitment industry is a volatile type of businesses, you know, always when there is an economic downturn, uh, a recession, you know, all these kind of things. One of the first things that company cuts is, is really is recruiting, you know, yeah, yeah. unnecessary costs, right? Or what company think it could be an unnecessary cost. Of course, if you work for a big brand, you have a little bit more security around it. Nevertheless, big brands can also be absolutely ruthless with letting <laughs> people go. We have seen it before. So, yeah. um, you know, just because you work for a big brand, it doesn't mean that you have a job for life. You know, this company, especially if they're a listed company, you know, one of their ways to uh, cut in profit and deliver profit for the shareholder is to reduce capital costs. So yes, you have a little bit more security and this company 
can navigate turmoil a little bit better, but at the same time can also be very ruthless with letting uh, people that have been there for a long time go simply to please uh, uh, shareholders, basically. Yeah, I think so. You, you definitely get that where a big business decides just to make cut 20% of all the staff, right? We saw that in coronavirus with a lot of the big players where they made mass redundancies. I think on a, on a slightly more kind of micro scale, it's a little bit more job security. I think on average, you probably get a little bit more time to succeed in a, in a bigger business just because they have processes in place about how somebody might exit a business and the steps which you have to go through to get there. I think in a smaller business, sometimes it might be a more emotional decision and yep. just get, get fired. Um, so I think there is, there is that. Uh, I think the last point we want to talk about was what you do learn from working for a big business is you learn how to navigate the political side of working for a business. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there are some lessons to be learned on that side, for sure. Um, smaller business is easy, usually, because especially if you're in a really small boutique where there's you know, less than 20 people in the business, yeah, everything's pretty transparent. You tend to know what's going on. The career path is not really there anyway. So, yeah. So it doesn't matter, but you can speak with the CEO directly yeah. as well, right? You know? Speak to the leader, the, whoever's running the business. I think in a bigger business, you you will start to appreciate that maybe it's despite how advertised, it's not always based on results. But your career progression exactly is not always based on results. Commission sometimes is not always based on results. There's a political side to uh, being successful, and there's no doubt about it that sometimes really skillful political operators actually get further than. Uh, people who have more ability, right? I think honestly, I mean, from what I have observed working for big business, I think actually the better politician most of the time uh, has a faster career progression than the best performers, you know? So I think if you're working in those kind of environments, again, and, and politics, it doesn't necessarily need to have, I think, a negative impact on no. the words, right? No. You, you need to be, make sure that when working for a big business, you do manage a lot of internal stakeholders, you know, and you need to develop that aspect of your personality, I think, and, yeah. and professionalism that allow you to, again, get what you want without upsetting uh, all the other people that are working in the business. So I think it's a very valuable skill, but at the same time, you know, if you want somebody that really wants to have that, uh, I think, independence and, and really that input, the, the big business is not gonna change for you. You either change yourself and you adapt to working for that big business yeah. or you might decide to leave and go for another company.